Shalom. As you can see at the sign here, we're at Tel Tzafit National Park. Tel basically means hill. It's an Arabic, uh, uh, an, Ara uh, an Arabic word, and you can definitely see it's a hill, and it's a tell. In other words, one civilization on top of another civilization on top of another civilization, and it's called Tzafit. I don't exactly know in Hebrew what Tzafit means, but what's important is Tel Tzafit, we are five miles almost as a crow flies from Azika, which is the David and Goliath story. And there's a city five miles west of Azika, and it's Gath. And so the archaeologists have actually proven definitely beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is the ancient city of Gath, which goes back to the Kaolectic period, back to the uh, Bronze period, both middle and late, uh, into the Iron Age, all the way after from the Iron Age to the Israeli period to the Persian period, the Roman period, uh, the Byzantine period, uh, the Crusader period, and finally the Muslim period. So this is a city with a long, long history. And I wanted to bring you here, not so much for the Goliath story. On top of the hill, uh, when we get up to the top of the tell, um, I'll show you something that's very, very interesting with regards to Goliath, but there's something here that I want you really to see, and it's not necessarily related to the David and Goliath story. It's basically related to this. Somebody asked me not too long ago why or what is the importance uh, for us to study the Bible from an archaeological, historical, geographical, cultural, and e even a linguistic perspective to take a look at that background. Why it's important is I believe in five areas. First of all, it actually uh, verifies what we believe. Um, Jesus was crucified. Definitely we know that, and indeed uh, we have amazing archaeological proof of Roman crucifixion. So it verifies. Uh, it Basically, we believe that Jesus was crucified. The archaeology proves it. And many times it clarifies. Jesus was a rabbi. Well, he's a rabbi. That's what they called him. Rabbi does not mean teacher. It means my master. What does, does that mean 2,000 years ago? So once you understand that, it clarifies understanding what Jesus' role is in the culture. Another one it would uh, add to, uh, Jesus had his Last Supper. However, the Last Supper happened on Passover as a Jewish Seder. So it adds to the meaning, because the Jewish Seder was a remembrance of the redemption. And here we are, Jesus, our Redeemer, having his Last Seder, providing the ultimate redemption. And it enhances it. Um, I could go through many, many stories in terms of how it enhances our complete understanding uh, of the Bible, and also uh, it even changes it, uh, changes uh, the interpretation, uh, or the inter not necessarily the interpretation, but how we may look at verses. I know there's one verse in Isaiah 42, 6, where God says to his people, Israel, that you are the light of the world to bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. Salvation, the Hebrew word is Yeshua. Well, wait a minute, that's Jesus' name. His name is salvation. So now we take a look at that verse and we say not only are his people picked to be the light of the world, but also Jesus, so that we become the light of the world to bring Jesus to the ends of the earth. So again, that perspective, and that's why we're here. We're going to be looking at this place from an archaeological perspective to see how it relates to the Bible itself. Some people believe that the Bible is myth, some people believe that the Bible is legend. Some people believe that it's just another holy book written by people with just trying to uh, basically to get their agenda across. However, when we go into the archaeology, the history, the geography, etc., we find out that we're dealing with a book that is beyond amazing. Could never have been, you know, planned uh, by men. Uh, it was a book designed by God, and it is His Word. And this is what we want to see today. So if you'll come with me, We'll start the hike up the tell. Uh, it's an interesting hike uh, up here, so please come follow me and we'll continue when we get up there. Shalom. Shalom Alecha. Well, we climbed Gath. As you saw below, uh, it was uh, an interesting hike. But it's a beautiful day up here. Uh, we're not all the way up 
at the top of the tell. Uh, I would say probably we're about uh, two-thirds of the way up. There's a couple of more pieces of the tell, both up here and here. We'll go up there a little bit later. But uh, there's one purpose that I wanted to bring you up here today. Um, just like I took you to Kiribat Kiafa, if you actually take a look at the website or actually access that specific uh, video as well, I've got the same purpose in mind here at Tel Tzav uh, Zavit. I think it's Tel Savit. Tzafit. Tel Tzafit, which is Tel Gath. One thing I want you to get your bearing is we're, if you're looking back this way that I'm facing, I'm facing west toward the Mediterranean. So the city of Ashdod would be this way perhaps, oh, let's say 8 to 10, maybe 15 miles. Now behind me is a Zika. So I'm going to put my hand up, and I believe right above my hand, based upon the camera, I'm getting some motion here. It should be this way, pointing straight up. That should be Tel Zika. Now I'll bring my hand down. You should see a hill, a greenish hill. And you'll see a separation in the trees on the crest of the hill. It's the only one that you'll see in the video that has the crest. That's Tel Azika. You'll notice it also because just to this side of the Tel, you'll probably notice some construction area, some white dust or a white dusty area just to the left of the Tel. Now, this is Gath, which means that Goliath is here. And I don't know if Goliath got up every morning. Uh, kissed his wife goodbye and took his lunch pail and he went to the battle. But that's the battle. It's only five miles away. And he could have walked it every day. It's not that bad. Probably going down the tell and just following the Elah Valley. So we know that. But again, like I said, there's a, a different purpose that I wanted to bring you up here for the tell. So with Goliath and the David story, certainly Gath is part of it. However, what I want to turn back to is the Philistines. The Philistines are also related to Samson. But before I do that, one thing I want you to see is a pottery shard. This pottery shard, an ostracon, uh, we found up here, uh, meaning that it's, since it's probably laying up here, it's probably not worth any, anything. But how old it might be, it could be the Chaolictic period. It could be, um, oh my goodness, late bronze. It could be early iron. I'm not sure. But it's interesting, here at Tel Safit, here at Gath, they found a pottery shard because this is, they're writing utensils at one time. This is what they would write on. And they had the name of Goliath on it. Now, before everybody got uh, all excited and said, see, this proves that Goliath lived here, uh, it seems as if from a biblical historical position, that Goliath seemed to be a common name uh, in those days. So a piece of pottery shard uh, that they found up here. Not this one, of course. That would be really cool that I'd have it. 